Hello, welcome to this video. This week we're looking at picture chart. It's been a while since I featured picture chart on the channel and I thought it'd be good to go back and have a look at it. For those who follow my stream or you can just look at all of the infographics I've created over the past few years. So I love an infographic. I think there's lots of opportunities and later in this video we'll go through and how explain how potentially infographics can be used as a tool for remote learning. So let's have a look through the app. So to the left hand side, we've got a number of things we can create. So we can create infographics. Typically infographics are long and thin. We can create presentations. We can create posters, which are typically A4, A3 sort of portrait size, reports, flyers, social media posts. So if you click on social media, you've got a variety of formats depending on the type of social media you're posting to. And just recently, they've introduced a new custom size option where you can alter the size into pixels if it's a screen based thing or into centimeters if it's a print based thing and put in the dimensions you want. So really flexible tool where you can create the type of graphics that you need to use for whatever purpose. So let's go back and look at the infographic feature. So you've got lots of templates. Now I do pay for this. There's a one-off payment, education, educators can get it for a reduced price. However, the free version will suit most of you uh, and will suit your students. There aren't quite so many templates in the free version, but it's there's enough to get you started. I typically like starting from a blank page. So I'll start with a blank. Having done that, I can then decide what background color I want so I can put in you can put in your particular tag code to get the particular color so this is the color I was using for an infographic just recently it's a bit bright isn't it? let's go with a darker one there and then having done that you can start to add elements so when it comes to creating infographics I think it's much better to set out with a limited color palette so potentially if I'm using this color if I want to then introduce some shapes or icons I'd probably add maybe a highlight color and then having done that the final color I choose would potentially be on the icon so what you can do is having added an icon uh, shape we can then paste so we can copy and paste that and we can paste those in and you can see we're getting the alignment lines we can do a select all and we can move those around as we see fit we go to text there's a variety, so we can have title, subtitle, etc., or we can have a framed text, and there's a whole raft again. I've got the paid version, so there'll be not quite so many choices on the free version, but still plenty. And then, having done that, I can put in my title. I can change the color of the text, having selected it. I can then position that text where I want. Again, if I wanted to, I could alter the opacity of the text. I could lock its position. I could add a link and I can arrange stuff forward and backwards. I can also align the text and I can align it in various positions. So we've got some text, we've got some shapes. Let's duplicate that row of shapes. And then I can search for graphics. So if you search what you're after, there are a number of options available. And again, this is the paid version. On the free version, there may not be quite so much choice for you. I like to choose some of the simple outline icons. And then you can obviously, using the shift key, you can pick up a tag and stretch them to fit as you see fit. You can also make them a different color. So you can see we're starting to build a infographic in there. And we may go for a phone. And again, we can rotate it. We can alter the size of it. And we can alter the color of it. So you can see you start to build up a process. You can alter the shape and the size of your components. So what I find is a useful technique to do is to, to have a, 
a reasonably small section and then just to duplicate that. So by clicking clone block, it will do another one and then you can edit and make additional changes to it as you go along. It's also possible to upload images. So on the full version, you get up to a gig of uploaded graphics. Typically I'm uploading display um, PNG images so they are um, transparent, but I can upload and then I can just position the information where I want it to be. So I think it's quite useful. I kind of like to upload some of the icons that I need for the infographics that I'm creating. And again, you can alter the size of those and position where you see fit. So that's how it works. Having added various graphics, added the text that you want, you can also go, if you go to the tool section, you've got the ability to add charts and maps. I particularly like adding videos. So you can insert videos from both YouTube and Vimeo. So let's just go to YouTube. So we'll, we'll pick up one of my videos on Wakelet and we'll just share that. So we'll copy that. We can then paste it and insert the video. See the video appears there. We can, as with images, we can alter the size of that and arrange it. So when we're happy, we've got our infographic created. We just need to save it. We can then do a preview and then you've got an opportunity either to download it. If you use the presentation format, you can download it as a PowerPoint, which is really useful. Uh, I think the variety of templates available with this are better than the variety of templates in PowerPoint, even using the new design function in PowerPoint. So you can do that. You can download it as a PDF or a PNG and you've got a variety of qualities. Again, I think slightly, subtly different if you've got the free account. The other option, which I really like to do, is to share it. So I can share it electronically. I can get OK. I can make it a public link. I can copy that link and add that. I can also embed it. So you could embed it into a website or into a VLE. It's also possible to password protect it as well. And if you wanted to and you had the team subscription, which cost a little bit more, you could share it with colleagues in a collaborative manner. So that I think gives you a good overview to how you can use it. For me, what I like about it is the ease of use. You've seen how quickly I've been able to drag in shapes and icons. There's a wealth of icons available, so it just speeds up the process of creating it. My top tips for using infographics would be minimize your color palette. Don't go too mad. Keep it simple and make it nice and easy. And don't be frightened to leave a bit of space. So let me just show you some of the ones I've done. So we go back to my dashboard. So this will show you all of the work that I've created. So for example, this one, which is yet to go out. This is on Microsoft Stream. I've kept it really simple. Limited color palette to three different colors. I've used white as the text and as the shapes. I've added some videos in there, made it very easy to view. So that would be my top tip. Keep the, keep the palette to a minimum, minimum, keep your text to a minimum, make it nice and visually appealing so someone's gonna to want to look at it. Well, at the start of the video, I mentioned this idea of, I think infographics can be used quite widely to support learning. So if we're looking at ideas for remote learning, I think an infographic is a great place to start for laying out work. So if you've got a number of activities you want your students to do, you could create an infographic and share that with them. And it could be chunked into the different sections on the infographic, highlighting the different tasks that you want them to do. It's also quite a useful way to summarize information. So if there's key points that you want them to, to take away from a lecture, then having an infographic highlighting those key points, it's a nice aid memoir, potentially a useful thing for revision. So that's another use for it. I think it's a great way for students to, to hand in assessments. So with an infographic, you have to know exactly what is the information 
that they understand and they think is most important. And because in an infographic you're limited to what information you can include, you need to distill it down to the specific elements that are accurate and, and relevant. So it's a great tool for students to use for assessments and if nothing else, you could use it to create your presentations and download those as PowerPoints as a starting point for your flipped learning content. So I hope you found that useful. Please like the video, share it, subscribe to the channel and join me again soon for more EdTech videos. Thanks for watching.